bobcats are these incredibly beautiful cats, typically not any larger than your average house cat. Um, they can reach about 25 to 30 pounds at their largest, so we're not talking about giant animals um, in our woods. Well, I understand that it's a controversial issue. Um, I come from a family of people who were farmers and hunters and fishermen, and uh, I'm not one to pass judgment. However, I do believe that there are times when it's possible to make a distinction between hunting that's necessary, and that's a loosely defined term, and hunting that is unnecessary. This proposal basically came to be because someone at a commission meeting, a hunter, stood up and asked the question, can we have a bobcat season? And that was about 10 years ago, and that's what led the fishing game to team up with UNH to start a study to see if they could hunt bobcat. They don't put it exactly that way, but if you go back to the notes, it does definitely sound that way. As someone who uh, is an animal lover, I look at bobcats and think, wow, fantastic, they made a comeback in our state, and I wish they could keep coming back. You know, if we were having a conversation about bobcats where they were overrunning, uh, that might be a different conversation, but right now I believe there are only a couple thousand uh, bobcats that they're aware of in the state of New Hampshire, so I think we should let them grow for a little bit more. Um, I think the fact that this is a trophy hunt, that these animals are not eaten, um, that there is no biological reason to hunt or trap them. Um, as apex predators, they self-regulate themselves uh, based on available prey. And so um, from a biological perspective, there's no reason to manage their numbers at any population. They will do that on their own. So this proposal to reopen a season on bobcats for the first time in over 25 years is just astounding. Um, here in New Hampshire, we've had over 14,000 people sign a petition against this proposal. Uh, over 70% of citizens are against the trapping of bobcats and another 70% are against the baiting and hounding of, of bobcats in this state. Public outcry over this proposal has just been incredibly consistent. So this decision was made by a very, very small fraction of the residents of New Hampshire. Uh, representing what you might say is a very small special interest group. The UNH study shows that uh, we now have a population of somewhere north of 1,400 animals. It could be 1,500, we don't know, but it's somewhere in that, that range. Um, still a very small number in the state. It, it doesn't justify a hunting season at this point. The hounding of, of bobcats, uh, we also allow the hounding of bears here in New Hampshire, and that practice is setting a pack of dogs um, out to chase a bobcat until he or she is so tired that they give up or they climb up a tree, um, and so that the hunter can then come and, and kill the animal. And um, in hounding, the dogs are also at risk of getting hurt. Um, the other issue here in New Hampshire, live, live free or die, you have packs of dogs who are running through people's properties. Um, they don't understand no trespassing signs or um, no hunting signs, uh, so they're just running after an animal. There's no way to control where they're headed. I don't get the, the, the hunting, uh, the trapping. It's a little bit um, confusing to me in 2016 why it would even be necessary. I, it doesn't seem like a fair fight to me. I wish all deer could be armed so they could be in a, a, a duel with hunters, but uh, that's not my position to say, but I do not understand the basic concept. Uh, again, we're not living 300 years ago when people were surviving on bobcat meat or mountain lion meat or bear meat, so it's really a recreational sport. Instead, what would happen is the use of painful leg hold traps, which an animal steps into, and then uh, a trapper comes and checks on that trap and the animal has either died or has tried to get themselves free by chewing off their limbs. I'm, I'm a hunter and uh, you know, many, many good hunters don't like this thing. Unfortunately, there's a public perception that if you hunt, well, you automatically are for killing anything. You're going you're gonna to be for it. It's a, great, uh, it's a great fallacy. So now what are we doing here? We're killing an animal. We're not going to eat it. Um, God knows where the pelt's going. And I think that the, the fact that the only reason that folks want to trap these animals is to sell their pelts overseas for the fur market, in this day and age, that just is not acceptable to um, the majority of citizens in New Hampshire. When we look at this issue, uh, I think a lot of folks think that it's the Fish and Game Department that is making these decisions. And actually, it's a commission uh, that legislatively is set up uh, it's an 11-member commission 
that, uh, that made its own decision and, and frankly is making most of the decisions about hunting and fishing seasons in the state of New Hampshire. I'm not really happy with fishing game. And it's not the department, it's the, the commission. I think that's a, a very important thing for everybody to remember. Um, I feel they want to go forward with the hunt just to accommodate these few hunters and travelers. They've said it openly that it's just to provide opportunities for hunters and travelers. No other reason. They're not going to be making money off of it, they're actually going to be wasting money. That general fund money comes from New Hampshire taxpayers. And New Hampshire citizens, they had a right to speak up regardless of that piece of information, but now that we're paying to support that agency, um, even more so their voices should be heard. They like to um, perpetuate that they're a self-sustaining um, organization, which isn't true. Um, I'm not exactly for how many years now, but they have taken $600,000 out of the, new, uh, the general fund. The public uh, participation in this process has just been really encouraging, and unfortunately, all of that participation uh, still was not enough to sway the Fish and Game Commission to vote in favor of bobcats and in favor of what the, the general public wants here in New Hampshire. I'm also involved, I might say, with, uh, with a group that's now organizing some efforts to uh, counter the, buff, the vote by the Fish and Game Commission. So the next steps here are that this is going to go to a legislative rules committee. The hearing is April 1st. We're going to have a strong showing there and a very coordinated effort uh, because we feel that this isn't in the public interest. There have been thousands and thousands of New Hampshire residents, not out-of-staters, but New Hampshire residents that have shown opposition in writing or attended hearings or both uh, to this season. And I'm angry. I think most people on this side of the issue are really angry with Fish and Game. To have them just turn around and almost act as though we were, we were never there. There needs to be more balance on the commission. The commission, there sits 11 hunters and trappers and baiters or fishermen. Bobcat was a symbol of a system and the, and the way it was handled by the commission was a symbol, another symbol, that uh, brings on the need for change. And last fall when Cecil the lion was, was killed, it really highlighted that trophy hunting still happens. And it doesn't just happen overseas, it happens here in New Hampshire. And that's exactly what's going to happen uh, if this bobcat proposal uh, moves forward. It's just another reason for people to go out and trophy hunt. They want to put a mantle or a piece on their wall. I don't want to be arguing the minutia of it. I just want to, want to follow my heart on this thing. That's what I think that I owe the bobcat. I wish the bobcat had, had become New Hampshire's state symbol. It needs to be left alone. Last year, there was a group of fourth graders who um, lobbied to have a bill passed which made the bobcat the state wildcat. And that bill passed, and um, the bobcat is now our state, our state wildcat. And I, I find it um, incredibly discouraging that we want our, our students and our kids to go and be part of the legislative process and then a mere six months later we turn around and um, we go after those same animals and um, I don't think that that's sending the message of um, civics and learning that we really want to be sending to, to the students. I love this state and I love the people in this state and I think everybody part of the reason why we live here is that live free or die and it's true conservatism not politically but and leave me alone let me do what I want to do and I think that's great it's fantastic and I support that and uh, part of the reason I choose to live here as opposed to other places I could live is because of the natural beauty. However in the particular case of bobcats, it just seems a little bit like an unfair fight now. But uh, it's never, to me, it's never been a question of can. The question should be and is, should.